Hey guys, this is Kai from DDDC here, coming at you with a new video, and yet again, like what we hinted at yesterday, we're going to be doing a new Scream tier list. Yes. Yesterday, we rated the movies. Today, we're going to be rated every single ghost face. Minus, of course, the ghost face that appear in the show, because again, those ghost faces are not canonical to the movies at all. They do not have any connection to... um. Sydney, uh, Sydney, uh, Sydney Prescott, Dewey Wiley, Gil Weathers, pretty much anyone that appears in the movies. So, yeah, let's get started, shall we? Okay, gonna... let's see, randomly pick a person. Da, 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 da. Okay, Amber. The thing about the ghost faces from Scream 5, they were pretty decent, but they were pretty freaking sloppy. Yeah, no. so... They made it painfully obvious that they were the ghost faces with how they were, so... See? Uh... Yeah. Okay. As you uh, know, uh, no, 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 but B. B. I'm just gonna put both her and Richie in B. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Roman from 3. A. I can agree with that. I mean, he was quite literally, like I said, he was literally the, the Palpatine to Billy's. Yeah, and, and, yeah, he was. And not to mention, he had a super unique voice changer that he could, like, uh, Dude, like one that, moment. That voice if he wanted, was crazy. Yeah, if he wanted to trick Dewey, well, he could just imitate Gail's voice. Yeah, or and, if he wanted to get Gail, could imitate Dewey. Or Sydney's, and and he really did mess with Sydney big time with that voice changer by acting like Marine Prescott, their mother. Oh so, yeah. And he and he was very smart. He had a bulletproof vest. And overall, I feel like he was a pretty good ghost face. He really was. I mean, dare I say, he was basically the OG ghost face. In terms of the story. In terms of the story, yes. But, technically, he wasn't at the same time. He was more of the mentor. But, yeah. It's really... It's a bit... Confusing, but not too confusing. Yeah. So, next. Uh, Charlie and Jill. I would have to put them up in... You know what? I'm gonna put them up in A. I mean, all things considering, considering Jill is Sydney's cousin. Their plan almost went off a went off the with hitch. That, yeah, their plan almost went off without a hitch. It almost was as successful as um, a Romans and Billy and Stews. The yeah. problem is, as per usual, they get arrogant. Mm -hmm. And that's the main problem with all the ghost faces. They get arrogant, and then, and then they end up fucking up. And of course, you know, a ghost face portrayed into another ghost face. Yeah! And basically, you know, obviously this was over the fact that Jill was sick and tired of hearing about Sidney Prescott. So she wanted that fame. And ironically, she did get that fame. She she was called a hero. Yep. But she wasn't alive to celebrate. Nope. Because she started freaking out in the hospital. Yeah, because she realized, crap, I didn't actually take Sydney out. Yep. So yeah. Next. The three from six. Ethan Quinn and the police. C. I, I kind of figured they was going to go and see. I can't blame you on that one. <laughs> Their plan was was good. I like the idea that they were each using different ghost face from the year's kills. And I understand that they were doing this because of Richie. But to me, it felt no different than Miss Loomis. True. Very true. And now again, some people may say, well, here's the thing. Why are you guys going to be, why do you guys put Amber and Richie 
in B when probably to some people those three could be a lot better. Here's the thing. They were great. But there was one stinking problem. It's just one teeny tiny detail. They only killed not a lot of people in their movie, guys. Scream yeah. 6 did not have a lot of body counts. No. Yes. They were able to wound people, but they never took anyone out. <laughs> From a movie that says that anyone is basically disposable, well, no one didn't. The movie was pretty safe. At least Scream 5 had the balls to kill off Dewey. And 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 Judy Hicks. They could have killed off Gail in this movie. Oh, they, didn't. they could have. So with that said, I think they're even more sloppy than Amber and Richie. Yeah. So let's move on to the next. Uh, Mickey and Miss Loomis. Put them up in B. Yeah. You know Actually, what? you know what? You know what? Move Mrs. Loomis to A. Okay, and put Mickey in B. Got you. Yeah. I, I can understand that since they both had different motives for what they were doing. They both had different motives. Um, Mrs. Loomis was targeting people that... Uh, was a part of what happened to her son while Mickey was going after randoms. Yep. And so that's why we kind of split the two because naturally they were two. They naturally they both were going to betray each other eventually. They both had two different reasons why they were doing things. Yep. And what made Mrs. Loomis so great was the fact that she actually bumped off Randy. And she almost got Dewey, but Dewey, Dewey survived. Con- yeah, Dewey survived again. <laughs> again. <laughs> so, I think Mrs. Loomis is a pretty good ghost face. Um, however, none of these compare to the OGs. <laughs> Billy and Stu. <laughs> Billy Loomis and Stu Mackner, the originals. And that's why we're going to put are, them up. Are we putting them in really, really good killers? Yeah, I was about to say, well, are we putting them in really good killers? <laughs> now, some people would probably argue this doesn't, you know, some people may argue that some of these people should be move lower or move higher. However, we can all agree that Billy and Stu, they deserve to be the only ones in the first place. Yeah. They're my. When it comes to all the ghost faces, they're my favorites. I want to do a Scream 1 ghost face cosplay eventually. Oh, that's going to be fun. (laughs) And when I lose this weight, I I also want to do just a regular Billy Loomis one. I want to have, like, the white shirt with the blood on it. Have have the wigs out as him. I'm fucked. <laughs> um, you know, they were the smartest of all the ghost faces. Yeah, they were. They almost got their plan, almost went through. Problem is, people had plot armor. So yeah. Had final girl plot armor. This is true. Which, to me, if I would want any ghost face to win, it would be Billy and Stu. And that's the one part of Scream 5 and 6 I, re- I really enjoyed. Was seeing Billy just pop up randomly inside Sam's head. And <coughs> and also, too, you know, what, and what makes them basically the GOAT is that they were responsible for Marine Prescott's Death. Death, yep. And blamed Cotton on it. Mm hmm. Even though that Yo Weathers blamed themselves for everything, well, well, blames herself for everything, the fact of the matter is, 
is that if it wasn't for Roman getting that dirt about Marines Prescott's yeah. scandalous history because of how much her time working at the studio and those parties messed her up, that's why Roman helped them plan the revenge. Now here's the thing. Do I think... Do I find it interesting that Billy and Stu was still planned on doing more killings? No. Doesn't shock me because it's almost like a wild animal. Once a human gets that taste of blood, it's hard for them to... Uh, yeah. You know, it's like... So yeah, Billy and Stu is by far the best ghost faces and you know, they both complement each other. You have Billy's more like straight you know, conniving personality than you have Stu like crazy personality and, and and funny enough, um the guy that played Stu, I forgot his I his name is es escaping me now. Um, oh fuck. Hold on. Keep talking, I'll look up his name. But he really does have great range as an actor because he also plays Matthew Lillard. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Matt, if you're seeing this. Um, <laughs> if you you know what makes him a great actor is that he in that movie he played so many different parts of that character. He could play him serious. He could play him angry. He could play him upset. He could play him crazy. And and you know this is the guy that was. Um, who played, um, Shaggy. And he also went on to play Will William Mafton. Sad so Springtrap in the FNAF movies. That made me so happy when he got cast in his afting, because I was sitting here going, oh, he gets to be a killer again! <laughs> and, so, like, I, yeah, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, I believe I said straight out that they picked the perfect person, because he knows no, a thing or two about <laughs> slashing. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> And, he really does. And that was another thing I joined about that I enjoyed about the FNAF movie. There's a moment to where Springtrap wipes the knife off, like Ghostface style. Yeah, I know, and I love that. I'm sitting here going, they knew. They had to have no one casting him. And Yeah, like, you know, I'm just so looking forward to seeing him become all like you know, like becoming how a purple guy looks now. Looking like a freaking <laughs> mangled mess. Yeah. But, you know, part of me hopes that Stu actually survive because I would love to see him pop up in a future movie, but unfortunately I think he's done because you can't, you, you can't come back from having a TV set, especially one that big during Wait. it. Let me tell you, those those old yeah. 90s TVs. Yeah, and especially with how we saw how bad it was broken. Yeah. Six. Yeah, there's, you, the, there's no coming back from that. <laughs> those old 90s TVs, they were heavy. Oh, yeah. And don't get me started on the built-in ones from the 80s. I never was around for those, but I'm so glad I never had to deal with them. But... So yeah, um, that's it for our ranking of all the ghost faces. I hope everyone has enjoyed this. Um, thinking for something else we might do. Um, I think. Hmm, I think for the next video. I, th I think for the next one, if we get through them all, because we're currently watching another big movie series. One of my favorites. Which is Puppet Master, which is my first time seeing them. I've, I've enjoyed the first two. We're going to watch three after this one. That's video. my favorite. Which is apparently Babe's favorite, so I, I will probably end up enjoying that as well. So we'll probably rate so the movies. So we might rate we'll... the movies and then... And probably rate all the puppets. I love the puppets. I know they're killers, but I love them. <laughs> <laughs> they all have their own personalities. Like I Torch know. is a Torch is a grumpy guy. He, he's grumpy. He is grumpy. And then there's Blade. Blade's my favorite. 
I think Blade Soul will be becoming my favorite out of the pop. <laughs> and in three, we get to meet one of my other favorites. Which one's yeah. that one? You'll see. Okay, I'll see after we get done with this. <laughs> I'm sorry, so, yeah. I derailed it. <laughs> it's fine, dear. So yeah, you guys let me know what you all think. Make sure to comment. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Make sure to hit that bell icon to all. And as always, we'll see yes. you all in the next video. See you guys. Bye, guys.